you're going to find that social studies and humanities are super straightforward and they have the intro, conclusion, they have body paragraphs in the middle. It is very well laid out. Natural sciences oftentimes will have a thesis and it will have a conclusion, but there are a lot of unfamiliar terms. They're very technical and the topics they pick are not necessarily going to be something that you have ever heard of before. The one that we're going to look at today, though, is going to be a topic that most likely you've heard a little bit about. You are going to focus on summarizing the main idea of the paragraph. There are going to be a lot of terms. There are going to be a lot of dates, names. You are looking for keywords and you're looking for the overall structure. Now, you could go through and make really detailed notes. You don't have enough time. And it's very frustrating if you make all those perfect notes and then they never ask anything about it. So we're going for a great passage map, and then we're going to use that passage map to answer questions. We can't spend too much time, and the approach is actually going to save you a bunch of time, and you're going to be able to get lots of points. So starting with paragraph one. Go ahead and read paragraph one. So for paragraph one, this is really awesome. All you need for paragraph one is the fact that the ozone layer is decreasing. That's it. That's all. If you need to know between 12 and 45 kilometers, you can reread it. They'll give you line references. So make sure that you are looking just main idea. Each paragraph, main idea, main idea, main idea, all the way through. Get through that passage in a timely fashion and then tackle those questions. Go ahead and read paragraph two. Paragraph two very little ozone in the layer. Done. Go ahead and read paragraph three. Paragraph three. Done. You're really just looking for the overall main idea, and then they're going to point you to where to go when you get to the questions. Paragraph four. Now, for all of these paragraphs, you can be circling and underlining things that you think they may ask about, but do not forget to put an actual note next to each paragraph. Write it down on your paper. Get in the habit of writing down those small notes. They don't take very long, and they are extremely valuable. So variations in the ozone, that's all you need for paragraph four. And your notes may not be exactly like the ones that I'm putting up here, but as long as you're capturing something very similar and you're not writing too much, that's really something you want to avoid, then you are going to be set for testing. This is a really big paragraph. Go ahead and read that paragraph. For paragraph five, check to see if you have the idea that holes in the layer are because of the chlorofluorocarbons. We're ready for paragraph six. It's a really small paragraph. Paragraph six is the CFC industry. Paragraph seven, health versus economic interests. And again, you should be pausing the video to read each paragraph. It'd be nice if I was just there next to you on test day, and just writing down the notes, but you have to do it yourself. Okay, paragraph eight, ready, set, go. Paragraph eight, efforts to limit. Paragraph nine. Paragraph nine is all about how they actually have a really long lifespan. So it does take 10 years to reach the ozone. So it means that even if we were, let's say we were to stop everything or greatly reduce, it would take a little while for it to repair. And by a little while, I mean like a lot of while for it to be completely better. But even small improvements would take about 10 years. Okay, final paragraph. Final paragraph, options for fixing the problem. Done. So we have a thesis, the ozone layer is decreasing, and the conclusion is there are options for fixing the problem. In between, we had a lot of information. And what we need to do is use the question stems, the part without the answer choices, to guide our predictions. Question number one. This one's an awesome one because you can actually go back to the passage and figure out exactly where it said. So if you were circling dates, scan for dates. 
And you're going to see in paragraph five, it says, however, although the October minimum remained constant until 1979, the total ozone content over the pole was steadily diminishing until in 1985, public opinion was finally roused by reports. So roused means to be excited by. So 1985. Be careful not to pick 1979. They're telling us it was 1985 that the public finally said, oh my goodness, this is bad. We need, we need to do something about that. This one's an interesting one. You can't really predict in the way that you would predict other ones because it's an accept question. It's very helpful to actually circle the word accept. I know it's in really big letters, but it's very easy to forget that that's what the question's asking. So if you look back at paragraphs four and five, you have, for paragraph four, the fluctuations appear to result from the natural phenomena of wind effects and temperature change. That's H and J are gone because they contribute to changes. They're not depleting it necessarily the way that CFCs are, but they do affect it. And then here's an interesting one. In paragraph five, it says the culprits, meaning the people responsible or the things responsible for the whole had already been identified as being supersonic aircraft, such as the Concorde, although these have now been exonerated. So they personified supersonic aircraft. It's not like we put them on trial or anything, but exonerated means to relieve of guilt. So if, if, a, if an inmate is exonerated, it means that they're found not guilty and then set free. So the supersonic aircraft, they are not the culprit. So that is actually the answer. Another thing too is you wouldn't even have to look for that. Once you notice that wind and temperature were in the passage and affect the ozone, you could actually get rid of H and J. And if you've been reading the passage, you know CFCs are responsible as well. So that would leave just answer choice F. So we're going to be talking about technique as we get closer to test day and ways to save yourself time. So if you want to look at paragraph five, you will find that the answer is F, but you also want to think, how can I be as conservative with my time as possible? So either way, you're going to find the right answer. We want to really use technique to get through it a little bit faster. Now we have the main point of the sixth paragraph. Now here's where your passage map really comes in handy. In addition to helping you figure out what the author's talking about, go right to your passage map. We wrote down for our, for our passage map, paragraph six, size of the CFC industry. So which answer choice matches that? Highlight the numbers of CFCs produced every year? Maybe. Criticize is very extreme. Criticize the countries responsible? Probably not. Indicate the economic interest at stake. Does the size of the CFC industry help us do that or help the author do that? Probably, but let's check D. List the most important members. Most important members? That doesn't sound right. Answer choice C. Our final question. Based on the information in the passage, which of the following would most likely result if all production of CFCs were to end today? You know where that's located? Paragraph 9. Do we want to reread all of paragraph 9? Even if we really wanted to, because it was the best paragraph we'd ever written, thinking it wasn't, you want to use your passage map again. So your passage map says, CFCs have long, have long lifespan, take 10 years to reach ozone. Okay, so scientists would have to replace the quantities of ozone already lost. I did not hear about that in the passage, didn't know that was possible. The ozone layer would only return to normal levels after 75 years. In the paragraph, it does say they have a lifespan of 75 to 400 years, but I don't think that's what they meant, that it would return to normal after 75 years. They were just trying to tell us they last a long time. Scientists would have to destroy all chlorine molecules in the atmosphere, not in paragraph 9, and the benefits would not be experienced for another 10 years. True story, because if it takes them 10 years to reach the ozone, that's the delay that is part of the process. Because it travels, it takes a while for it to actually show impact. So 10 years span, that's exactly what we're looking for.